けども。Public hearing for the special use permit 1 2021、uh, regarding the Savinia Board of Education cell tower to be lo potentially located at Northview High School property.、Um, again,、uh, for housekeeping purposes,、um, my name is Mark Fry.、Uh, I'm the president of council.、Uh, other council members in, in attendance are、uh, Mr. Richardson, Mr. Hainham, Ms. Capolini,、uh, and Ms. Stow、uh, with us from the administration or mayor. Mayor Stow,、um, uh, our IT manager,、um, oh, she was Chuck、uh, Severnail, sorry,、uh, Mrs. Browning, Mr. Aller.、Uh, I, see, I also see、uh, Mr. Sanford. And I think that's it.、Uh, in addition to that, we have、uh, Dr. Motley, Mr. Feller, and Ms. Hoffman,、uh, who are school board members, and Dr. Miley is our superintendent of,、uh, of Sylvania Schools. So thank you very much for being here this evening.、Um, I, I know that、uh, we've got a number of people online, I believe, that want to speak. Is that correct, Mrs. Brenny?、Um, I believe so, yes. They're, they have not indicated that they want to speak, but there are、um, four people online who previously requested for some information for them. Uh, great. So if you if you want to speak,、uh, obviously, okay, that's great. So just so in the chat, some people are very familiar with the Zoom structure, and some people are not as familiar.、Um, for the purposes, again, of the record,、uh, we'd like to keep these comments relatively short. I do know that、um, the uh, the people who、uh, Tarpon Towers who are interested in, in installing this cell facility,、uh, cell tower facility at the school property,、uh, wanted to make a short presentation, and I would like to. To recognize them at, at this particular time. So, if you could obviously state your name and address for the record, please. Yes,、uh, good evening. My name is Gene Abercrombie.、Uh, I am an attorney with Eastman and Smith, 1 Seagate, 24th Court, Toledo.、Um, I have with me this evening、uh, John Armour, Executive Vice President of Tarpon Towers, and Steve Carr, Director of,、uh, of PDM Wireless, its consultant.、Uh, Tarpon Towers,、uh, as indicated, is requesting a special use permit in order to、uh, place a wireless telecommunications tower on the campus at Sylvania Northview High School.、Uh, Tarpon Towers and the Board of Education entered into a lease agreement、uh, dated January 13 of 2021. Uh, pursuant to which,、uh, provided that approval is given, Tarpon will con、uh, construct the tower. At this point, I would ask Mr. Armour、uh, to、uh, address briefly、uh, Tarpon Towers. Thank you.、Uh, my name is John Armour, ARM 04, item 113, Dennis Drive in Glenshaw, Pennsylvania, 15116.、Uh, Tarpon Towers is a,、uh, as we've stated, is a tower company. We own and operate towers around the United States. Uh, collectively, our group has、uh, about 125 years of experience in this, in this、uh, area. I personally started in 1994.、Uh, there are six of us that own the company, and each one of us have been with one of the three public tower companies, either American Tower, SBA, or Crown Castle. So we bring a lot of resources to this. We've、uh, been doing it for a long time. And for us, this is just normal state of business. In this particular situation, we're building this tower at Horizon. Has、uh, asked us to. They're going to be our first and anchor tenant. But because of the location, because of the problems in the area, we expect it very quickly to be、uh, a three tenant or four tenant tower with some of the other providers like T Mobile,、um, Dish Network, who's coming out, and, and、um, ATT. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me.、Uh, my name is Steve Carr, address 2894 Aldersgate Drive. Greenwood, Indiana, 46143.、Um, basically, I want to give a brief a video presentation of the location so that everybody understands exactly where on the property it is. <clears throat>、uh, he's going to tee it up for me on the screen here. <clears throat> Okay,、um, so uh, basically, uh, Tarpon Towers、uh, is going to be located in a facility at s a v a n n a School,、uh, Northview High School property.、Uh, we've been in discussions with the school corporation for quite some time、um, to get us to this present moment.、Um, if you could change the slide. 
This is basically going to be first and one quarter of their area for photograph. <laughs> so here's where the facility is going to be located. Our access drive will come in here off of Silica Drive to the proposed site. This area is where the new softball diamonds are. And then there's kind of a batting cage. So our facility will be going um, next to the batting cage area. Next slide. This is just their survey of the property, showing where our, our utilities will come from this point as well. So the proposed tower site. Next slide. The area identified in green is the area with which our lease facility would be located. As you can see, the batting cage is here. We also identify future areas where future co-locators will be able to locate their equipment uh, inside the existing fence compound. This fenced off area will be have uh, slats running through the chain link fence to screen the uh, equipment on the ground. Next slide, please. This basically shows a vertical profile of the facility. It is a monocle design, 130 feet tall with a 10 foot lightning rod at the top. Verizon and tents will be located at the top, and then you have areas for future co -locators. In order to uh, have the future co-locators there, you have to have antenna separation from carrier to carrier. Um, and that basically shows that the tower will um, support um, Verizon and other future carriers as well. Next slide, please. This is basically the black vinyl fencing and slats that will be located around the compound, similar to how they screen the current baseball fields on the property. Next slide, please. This is just basically looking uh, directional north uh, from the proposed site. Next slide. That's south. Next one. East, next one, and west. And as you can see, there's current the existing structures of, uh, uh, that light up the baseball fields on the property. Next slide, please. And this is what we did as far as a photo simulation. We basically photo simulated the facility into a photograph to give you an idea of a before and after. Top picture is what exists there now. And this is photo simulating the facility in the picture. And as you can see, it just as if it's another um, light structure in the area. Next slide, please. And these are all coming from different perspectives. This is if I'm uh, over towards where the football fields are looking back towards the school. This is today. This is if the facility is constructed. Next slide, please. And this is uh, looking in from Silica Drive. Uh, Today, future, next one please. This is looking back towards uh, the north, back towards the site, this is today. This is photo simulated as the future. And then next slide, I think that's the last one. So that kind of gives you a good understanding of the proposed location. Um, and the site will be located about 457 feet from the north property line, 391 feet from the south property line, 661 feet from the east property line, and about 672 feet from the west property line. Um, so uh, basically that is the location that we're requesting approval of. And if you have any specific questions about the location or anything associated with it, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Do members of council have do members of council have questions? Yeah, uh, one other thing that uh, uh, they wanted me to address was the need. Um, during our many discussions with the school board, um, one of the things that uh, they all recognized uh, and was also communicated in a, the school board meeting when we had to get the site approved uh, through the school board and for the, uh, the lease to be signed was that uh, they had, were aware of the coverage issues and the problems with lack of coverage in the area. And that's kind of one of the key things that this facility will do for Verizon is it will improve coverage and also, also offload existing facilities in the area to loosen up capacity so that the site can then operate uh, appropriately. So thank you very much.
I have a quick question about coverage. I know there's like lots of different levels of 4G and 5G and different levels of 5G. Are we getting something like really great? Yes. You, we, what level are we getting? Well, are we getting a 4G or this, a 5G? This or? site will be situated such that in the future we'll be able to get 5G technology. We um, have designed it for futurely, in the future, getting that 5G technology. And that 5G technology is based on budgetary needs and, and launches of the network in certain geographical areas. So, so Verizon isn't planning on the 5G right away? Not an immediate installation of the 5G day one to, uh, when we put it up in the air. That is something that happens down maybe a year from now uh, where they will put the 5G technology on it. And that is something that they have to change throughout their whole network. So there's been a lot of existing network that is continually getting that 5G technology added to it. And as you get new sites online, they come in line with that process of getting added to the 5G footprint. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from members of council? Thank you. Um, you will hear comments from some speaking in opposition to this project this evening uh, regarding alleged health concerns with respect to cell towers. There was quite a uh, lively discussion of plan commission regarding that. Um, in response to a request made by Mr. Hainham, I submitted a short memo to uh, the law director with respect to the issue of preemption. The Federal Telecommunications Act uh, of 1996 uh, preempts uh, local zoning laws when it comes to consideration of health and environmental effects. And uh, I just ask that uh, council take into consideration that those are items that, that cannot be uh, considered in connection with granting or denying the requested uh, approval. And uh, in conclusion, <clears throat> the code requirements set forth uh, in your municipal code require the following elements to be met in order for a special use permit to be granted. Number one, the special use permit is necessary or desirable for public convenience. Uh, at that location. Number two, the special use is so designed, located, and proposed to be operated that the public health, safety, and welfare will be protected. And number three, the special use will not cause substantial injury to the value of the property in the neighborhood in which it is to be located. Um, I firmly believe that we have met all of those requirements. Uh, number one, uh, with respect to public convenience, uh, as many of you likely know, uh, there are some coverage gaps that I suspect that the school board um, uh, superintendent or uh, members may address. Uh, number two, uh, clearly this is in furtherance of public health, safety, and welfare in order to allow individuals to uh, to, to reach others, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, during times of public emergency and so forth. And three, not cause substantial injury to the value of the property. As you can see from the renderings that Mr. Carr put up, uh, the, the tower is barely visible when you take into consideration the light towers that currently exist on the site. Uh, are there any questions at this point? If not, I will be available to answer questions following. Mr. Uh, Before you step yes, away, sir. Uh, I know from uh, some of the email records that we received, uh, which will of course be part of the public record here, that um, a number of my neighbors have uh, expressed concern that uh, the installation of this cell tower would severely and adversely affect their property values. Um, based on uh, reading those comments, they're based, uh, those comments derive from both aesthetic concerns, but also health concerns of uh, people who would be buying the property. So it's not the, it's not the health effects per se of the uh, tower, but the perception of the public regarding those issues. How would you address uh, those comments? Um, number one, I guess I would first address those by saying, um, I have not seen those emails, so I can't speak directly to them. Um, I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know if any of those individuals are uh, appraisers or real estate brokers who are uh, in the business of valuing property to be able to properly vet. I am sure they are not. Okay. Um, so I, I guess I would say that um, their concerns, while valid, uh, may not be 
ultimately realized uh, because I think, um, because they're not obviously experts in evaluation of property. I think that cell towers are becoming much, much more common um, as opposed to 20 some odd years ago when it was an abnormality. Uh, I think the aesthetics uh, line up very well with the area and uh, the area from the tower to the residences. I don't know if you know what the distance is, um, Steve. I communicated those in earlier testimony. Okay, great. Um, so I guess that's how I would. But I, I would assume you would agree that we're the ar arbiter of that issue. I would agree with that, yes. Okay. And, um, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I have four, you step away. Yes. I, I just have a, a question. In point number two, you mentioned yes. health and safety. Yes. And the first thing you mentioned was health and safety. So I don't understand how you can make it a condition or make it a condition and health and safety can be considered by us. Um, <clears throat> I was merely reciting your own code. Not in the point that you were making about health and safety. Uh, I don't recall precisely what I said. Uh, I was addressing the elements of your code that are required to be met. I'm not in order to be issued an SUP. Um, you said in the benefit and health and safety. So well. Safety, obviously. I just uh, I'll retract the word health if that if that is well again we're looking for just that. don't understand was if you're handcuffing us without consideration of that. I understand that I'm not the doing code it. Code. It. Congress did that in nineteen ninety six. So just I wanted to make sure that you sure. understood that too. Okay. Uh John Armour again, a couple of points. Of one about uh, your comment on the emails from the neighbors and the concerns. Um, in my experience, and, and again, doing this since 1994, we've seen a definite shift in the interest in having the good cell recovery, good cell coverage where you live. So many people today are looking at homes and saying, does my phone work? Uh, I'm not so sure about this phone. My phone doesn't work. I don't know that I want it. The same with businesses. So in the world that we're moving towards and have moved into, which is a wireless world, it's very important that not only homes have it, but businesses have them as well. And as far as the, the values of the property, being in this business for as long as I've been in it, what I've seen is where 20, 30 years ago, we put a cell tower in the middle of a farmer's field that was 300 acres. Well, now it's a community of four or 500,000 other houses. And the only lot that doesn't have a house on it is sitting in the center. And it's the cell tower, which was the first thing to go in there. So it's not a deterrent. I mean, there may be a couple of people here and there, but it hasn't historically been a deterrent for people's real estate and you know, for people's desire to move into a neighborhood where there is a cell phone. It's actually become the opposite. And that's your anecdotal evaluation. So, I mean, we've got a lot of houses in Sylvania that are presently located in what were previously farmers' fields, you know, there's no cell tower <laughs> uh, nearby. Yeah, I'm not uh, suggesting so that every field has a tower. Maybe, maybe you could maybe you could address a little more the uh, impact on service in uh, the city of Savannah that this how supposedly uh, assist us. Well, I actually think uh, if, if the school board is going to talk, they're going to talk about their. I believe it. I don't want to speak for them, but it's our understanding that there have been issues there at the school where they have not been able to use their phones. There are dead spots where they know that they have to end a call or don't start a call. So those are the kind of issues that Verizon is looking to fix in this area. And as I was mentioned before, this will not only increase the coverage, but it will offload the surrounding sites that are getting loaded up and can't hold calls any longer. So if you think about a cell site, it's like a, a living, breathing organism, if you will, in that the more it's used, the smaller it gets. When it's not used, it expands. So those cell sites right now that are serving the area are so overloaded that they just can't take calls or they drop calls. So that problem in that area is going to be corrected by this. I believe in some of the materials that were originally submitted there was there were some maps or descriptions of uh, coverage impact. 
that would be stuff that was designed by the RF engineer for Verizon to show what coverage looks like today, the dead spots and the holes, and then what will be achieved when the new cell site goes up. Well, I was a, uh, I was an economics major. I don't really understand the engineering all that well. It is to any new address that. Uh, I can try to answer some of your questions. Sure. Mr. Carr, just for the record, this is Mr. Carr speaking again. 2094 Aldersgate Drive, Green, Indiana, 46143. The question that you had specific is how you know can we quantify the beneficial impact of this tower on services to the citizens of the city of Savannah? It will greatly increase and improve the services for the city of Savannah tremendously. It's one of uh, Verizon's top ten sites of worst coverage areas in this region that they have of Ohio in Pennsylvania, uh, it's one of the top 10. That's how bad it is. And that's why we've been working with the school corporation diligently because we know there's a problem that needs to be solved. And the improvement of coverage will definitely occur when the site goes on. Is there a way that's um, quantify that? Is it quantifiable? Well, um, we know that there'll be a great deal of improvement as far as the statistical equations associated with that how much improvement um it, it's really a tough equation but we know that in order to get this accomplished we have a radio frequency engineer who submitted a detailed report in our planning commission submittal that showed why this facility is needed where it is needed and what the facility will accomplish when it is turned on it explains about the coverage issues and concerns and that was a signed letter by uh, dean torben who is a radio frequency engineer, senior radio frequency well, engineer. What you uh, the Dean Torben, who is a senior RF engineer for Verizon Wireless. And if we had uh, additional questions about that, make these available to us. Sure. Mr. Hannah, if there are specific questions, absolutely we can um, we can get a hold of the, the uh, RF engineer and pose any specific questions. And I recognize, um, like you, I'm not an engineer. There, I was a finance major, so I understand numbers, but not those types of numbers. But if um, if if council would like, we can certainly get uh, the dean to uh, uh, summarize. The yeah, I, tried, I tried to go through that part of the application and I, did just and I got lost pretty quick. Right. So if, if that is something council would consider. Well, I think that goes to that second factor about, you know, service of the community. Something I'd be interested in knowing more about. We will certainly get additional information. I have another question that was a theme in some of the emails that I got in the last few days about burying cable. Is that help i mean is that an option does that do anything i don't i don't really know it's just it was a question that kept coming up in emails and i didn't know the answer sure i mean there are competing technologies out there you have fiber optics mm -hmm. you have cable and you have wires those are really the main three so when you talk about this it really depends on what what use you want to get so if there's a fiber optic cable coming and i'll just make this full example if there's a fiber optic cable coming to the school, which I'm almost positive there is, that's not going to help your cell phone. It's going to help your internet at right. your, your desk if you're connected via Ethernet. It's going to do the same thing uh, for coaxial coming in. But again, there are three different technologies. And I think you can all admit that the world has moved to a wireless, a wireless technology. And what we're talking about here is specifically for Verizon, the others will follow. But Verizon's dead spots and problems in the area. Um, this will also increase. I don't know what the uh, incoming coverage is like in the school today, but uh, I think one of the things that was touched on for a safety is that in today's world, with the things that are happening around the different communities, the schools, and whatnot, if there is a public service emergency in that school, the cell phones are going to work. Whereas I don't know how well that works today. It, I have to assume if you're having dead spots driving down the street. You get inside a concrete building, it's even diminished more. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from members of council? Thank you for the opportunity to address council. Thank you very much. Mrs. Bryan, if you um, 
Well, I certainly appreciate the information from the uh, people who made the application. Uh, I'd like to hear from the law director as to uh, her opinion in regards to both the legality of the prohibition on the RF frequency radiation questions and the provisions that were included in uh, what went through the planning commission. So if you could approach, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Fry. I um, did some independent research. Again, not that we don't trust but verify, right? <laughs> so, um, and I was able to confirm that the FCC did impose that rule that local governments are preempted from looking into uh, specific radio frequencies and uh, regulating based on that. Um, and that has, even though it was enacted in the 90s, it has been upheld for over 150 times since then. Um, and that the, so that is the answer on that. The plan commission had a couple of additional conditions that they um, wanted to require of Tarpon Towers. The first is that the tower will be constructed and maintained in accordance with a nationally recognized standard for cell tower construction and maintenance. The owner and operator of the tower will annually certify that the tower is physically and structurally safe, robust, and sound, and meets or exceeds all current nationally recognized standards for cell tower construction and maintenance. And finally, that the owner and operator will be obligated to decommission the tower at the end of useful life of the tower and to provide the city prior to initiating construction of the tower with financial assurance that there will be sufficient funds to decommission the tower at the end of the useful life of the tower. Um, and I, the uh, applicant has agreed to those conditions. Um, so. Question for you. The, yes. the gentleman's presentation indicated the possibility or probability maybe uh, of co-locators. Is this one bite at the apple? So this special use permit, this tower, they can add two more co-locators or would that have to return back to council? If it does not, it, special use permits run with the land. Mm -hmm. So um, it, as long as they don't exceed the height requirements, and I was a little bit I didn't want to ask that question. I was not sure how if those would be the same height or if those would be small. Lower. Lower. Okay. As long as they don't exceed the height requirements, then they would um for that district, then that they are permitted to be there. Any questions? Uh, other questions for Mrs. Bryant? Well, unless we change. Correct. Right. Currently. You can check that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So would adding additional providers, is that, does that change the terms? This might even be a question for members of the school system, but does that change the terms of the lease, or is that the lease through Tarpon Towers, and it doesn't matter if AT&T and T-Mobile add on, does that change anything? I'm not sure who's the best to answer okay. that question, but... Um. If Tarpon Tower, I don't know what the lease is. You should have no. Okay. The, lease, the lease is done at this yeah. point. Okay. You know, we, we spent years working on the lease to get the school board. And it uh, was stated it was signed in January. And is there a maximum number of providers that the lease fell on, anything like that? Or? No, it's really a more than capacity. Sir. I, I, I hate to interrupt. Oh, Sorry. Yes. Because your voice isn't going to carry onto the microphones. Understood. Again, John Armour with Tarpon Towers. Um, what I was saying was the lease was worked on for a number of years. The lease was executed in January. Um, the ability to add additional tenants is more a function of the capacity of the tower and what we designed it for in the beginning. Yes. So, you know, you, you couldn't design a tower for, say, three tenants and then put five on it. Sure. Um, but it does not change the terms of the lease. You don't. So, if you get five tenants, the school board does not benefit any further than one. Correct. Got it. Thank so you. your current lease provides for three? Your <laughs> current lease provides for the tower. Okay. What does that use they can put on? And the lease is silent as to how many you can put on? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
at this point, uh, um, Mrs. Barney, did we have anybody uh, online who indicated they wanted to speak either way? Um, there is one person who wishes to speak. I'm not sure if she is in favor or against. Um, her name is Fern Clausius, I believe. <laughs> Yes, that's Fern Clausius. And, and, and Ann, are, just, I hate to, my apologies for interrupting. Are you speaking for it or against it? I'm speaking against the towers being built. Okay, so just sit tight then. Okay. Uh, I, I wanted, uh, my apologies. I want to do four first and then against. It, I'm not sure that, the, I think the four is going to be a short conversation from this point forward, um, but that's just a guess. Uh, is there anyone here who wants to speak for it in the audience? <laughs> Yes, sir. I have a question. Just my question. There, you, you need to approach. Otherwise, we can't recognize you. My apologies. Name and, and address yeah, my for the name record. Is Bob Himsad, uh, I live at five five one four Ben Oak Road. And my questions were just to try to gain a little bit more under for some clarification. I had like four questions, but just to understand better. It, it, is this appropriate to ask now or? Um, it's, it's an hour number. It, it, it's it's Bob, if it's quick, then yes. <laughs> okay. They'll be quick. The tower height I, that, you, that you showed up there, how does that height compare to the other light towers that are already there? Are you able to give some sense of comparison on that? Steve Carr, once again, 2894 Aldersgate Drive, Indiana, 46143. Um, the existing structure there varied anywhere from 80 to 95 feet tall. Those, those are the stadium lights we're talking about? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that just helps to give us. Mr. Carr, you might as well stay here because I'm assuming these are all technical questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the next question is uh, about six or eight years ago, there was a um, over by Swine Creek Park, there was a cell tower going up, and then they weren't able to put it there because there were some restrictions because of a preschool that was located in that same general area. Do those restrictions still exist? For preschools, uh, once again, Steve Carr. Um, no, I know of none that exist um, in, uh, for a facility next to a preschool, high school, elementary school. We even put in tenants on top of hospital rooftops. Okay, okay. And then uh, the next one um, was um, yeah, 5G mini towers. There are many towers that is an alternative. There are. I guess just for clarification, there are other ways, smaller scale five G towers that can be used. Correct. So uh, once again, Steve Carr, five uh, G uh, is administered through several different processes. They put them on the macro, the macro facilities, which is a <laughs> full blown uh, facility that we are proposing here. Um, you also have small cell sites that are uh, twenty to thirty feet tall uh, that serve different. Uh, areas in different ways, but those small cell sites would not offload the macro network that exists today. Okay. okay. And then final question is just could you just color a little bit the, the factors that went into your site evaluation of that general area and how you sum it on that particular? That would just be helpful for me to understand that. Yes. Uh, thank you again, Steve Carr. Um, 2894 Aldersgate Drive. Uh, in regards to this surgery and when it was administered, um, the surgery was located um, on the south end of the golf course and the south end of the high school property. And then you had a lot of residential properties. So we knew we had to speak with the golf course community and or the school corporation. The first step we took was the golf course community. And um, one of the things that we would have had to have done to locate the facility on the golf course is they have a maintenance facility that's all the way to the south end of the property. Um, and we were proposing to do that. We took it to their board. <clears throat> they voted against it. They did not want to proceed forward. So we then focused our attention with the school corporation. This search ring um, has been around for quite some time. and We've been working diligently to find a solution to this problem. And as the years go by, this problem becomes even more of a problem for Verizon its network. Um, so if you think of a search ring and have a the south end of the high school property and the south end of the golf course down into the residential areas, uh, some of the Lord's campus property as well. Um, we presented uh, 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 speaking with Lord's and they weren't inter interested in doing anything either. Um, so it left us with 
going back to the school and giving the site there. Mr. McCain, you look to me like you have something you want to ask. <laughs> was, was there a reason for those? Uh, you mean that uh, the golf course for the for the uh, Basically, they just didn't want to didn't want to do it. They just uh, one of the reasons with the golf course is they hold that um, PGA event every year. We have a twenty four seven access to our sites, so they could imagine during that event, the self select site needs to be serviced. We would have to bring our truck facility all the way through that golf course to get to that site, which is the back way to make the facility. Work. That was the only area that they were willing to investigate for a possible location. Uh, therefore, some of their board members didn't want to proceed forward. Mr. Carr, the mayor brought up a great question, I thought. Um, why not use uh, the water tower? As it was stated in the RF engineer report, the water tower is too far north. It provides, it causes problems to the site in Michigan that services that area. We would not be able to utilize our PCS technology based on going on that water tank. Tell you the truth, if the water tank worked, we would have been there 10 years ago. <laughs> we don't really go, like going through these long processes of trying to get something accomplished. If that water tank was something that would be utilized, we co-locate on water tanks all day long. Thank you. So, um, is there? A, thank you, Mr. Carr. Thank uh, you. I, I don't know whether there's going to be additional commentary or not. Is there anybody here who wants to speak in the audience who wants to speak for the tower? Anybody online who wants to speak for the tower? Mrs. Brining, no comments? Not that I've seen. Only one person has said that she wants to speak in, against it. Yes. Okay, she's been waiting very patiently. I, I cut her off earlier. So, <laughs> ma'am, uh, my apologies for that. It, um, so, uh, if you could uh, go ahead, uh, please uh, keep it as brief as possible. Okay. Hi, my name is Fern Clausius, and I have I live at 4233 Lancelot Road. I've resided in Sylvania for almost 19 years, and I'm a 2015 Sylvania Southview graduate. Uh, adding cell phone towers and therefore adding more radio frequency um, radiation to our community is extremely concerning. There's a lot of uh, emerging research about the issues that these cell phone towers can impair and create new medical conditions including it, but not limited to cancer, seizures, cognitive and learning deficiencies, fertility problems, and more. Science research was a huge part of my career at Southview, and it taught me the importance of questioning what we think is true, setting aside our bias, and looking at the research. Why risk jeopardizing the students and surrounding community when there's a proven safer way to provide strong internet service to Northview, and we can locate the tower further away from residential and school areas? There's actually an ordinance in Los Angeles stating that cell towers can no longer be placed at firefighter stations because of the negative health impacts that they were seeing in their workers. Students spend most of their day at the school and many live in a close perimeter of the school. This isn't a decision to make lightly as it could put thousands of people at risk. It's my understanding that the city, not Verizon, would hold all legal liability should families sue over long-term medical issues resulting from this unnecessary addition. I understand how important it is to have access to phone service and the money that could be generated from hosting the tower, but it's important that this kind of technological improvement is done with caution and not in a way that will affect people's mental and physical health. It's better that we're proactive and avoid any issues than find out 10 years from now the damage it's causing to our community. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you very much uh, for the comments and uh, your patience. My pleasure. Are there uh, other uh, people here in the audience that would like to speak against the tower? Yes, ma'am. I'm Rebecca Zuckman. I live at 5522 Bent Oak Road in Sleepy Hollow. I think you could see my house on one of the aerial views. Um, I am speaking in opposition to this tower uh, from the perspective that I, uh, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for sending that letter. We would not have known that this was under consideration. I really appreciate that you are interested in hearing what people were affected by this. And I certainly know the effects of this. Drop calls are not a stranger to me in my life in Sleepy Hollow. Um, but I do speak in opposition to it, primarily from the standpoint of I would like us to reconsider uh, less 
population dense, housing dense location. I thank you for answering Bob Hemsoff's questions about the criteria. Were any other sites, um, was the library site considered? Does anybody know if that site was considered? Because that's a bigger piece of property and just a football field away. Were any other sites considered that don't impact the um, immediate community? My, op my opposition to this is primarily from the aesthetic standpoint. I certainly knew I moved it behind a school and I expected school activities. A cell tower is not a school activity. I don't expect you know, a chicken coop and I certainly don't expect a cell tower as part of my um, Northview community that I am a neighbor. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience that wants to speak against it? Yes, sir. Could I have an answer to my question, though? Did they look at um, Lucas County Library site, which is large? Mr. Carr, come on up. You're getting your steps in today. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> as far as the Lucas County Library, you're talking up around here? I I, Ms. Eckman, is that you're talking about the library in downtown? The through the back. It, when you, you'd have to uh, put it up on the map and show me exactly where it is. The that right right across the street, oh, across the street from City Hall, uh, too far north. It would have the same problem with the water tank. If it's right up around where we're at, right here, <coughs> too far north, have the same problem. Wouldn't solve the problem. What we're trying to do. It's not north. Yes. Yeah, would be. The south of the tower. Where am I going to say? I assume Dean Corbin did all that analysis or something. Yeah. Like it, correct? The Dean? Yes. Mm -hmm. The R engineer signed the circuit. And he's the guy who he designed the circuit. Basically, what happens is the Dean will put the circuit on a map that basically says I need to go out and find locations. It's my job to investigate the local zoning authorities and determine what can and cannot be done. And um, that's how we go about starting the process. The first step is we look at all existing structures of height to determine the suitability of co-locating because that is our first message. I don't have to spend a bunch of money to build a structure to accomplish what we need to do, which is speed the market. That's what Verizon wants. We've been working on this site for a long time. If there is an existing structure in the area, we would get on. How about the substation downtown? As far as it's too far north up here, it's one right here by um, sits down in the hole. Yeah. Right behind the fire station. Yeah, it sits, sorry. it sits down in the whole lower elevations, too far north up here. Taller tower. Too far north up. It, it's all about the geographical location of that set site. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, no. you raised your hand. Please uh, name and uh, address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Bob Trapp. I live at 7101 Crabtree Lane, back in Sleepy Hollow. I moved here because I wanted to live in a small town. Yes, I bought a house next to a school that had a football stadium and football games on Friday nights and marching bands. Now it's a seven-day party. Last week, the sound system was so loud I got, I had to leave my house. The gentleman said his tower is not going to affect property values, while my real estate agent begs to differ with him. Uh, I have spoken with her. She said, yes, it's going to affect your property values. So my question is, if it's going to affect my property values, is the school board going to lower my school taxes? Uh, my, my opinion, there's better places to build the tower than in a residential neighborhood. We already have 70 foot lights. We already have noise. We already have, we are already being disturbed seven days, eight week. And now they want to come out and build an ungodly tower, 130 feet in the air that we can set out in our backyard and look at. They talk about, oh, we're going to put a fence around it. 
you're not going to see the base of it. Well, I'm sorry, that tower is 130 feet in the air. You're going to see it. And we don't, you know, I yes, we, we need it. Why don't they build it in the front of the school? That'd be the perfect spot to build it, right in the front yard, right next to the swimming pool. Get it out of farther away from a residential area. They've got the same elevation. It's on the same piece of property. And they will get the same effect. Or build it down next to the creek and build it a little bit taller. But the last thing we need in a residential area is a 130-foot tower. We already have 70-foot lights. We've already had our values of our house decreased. And if this is such a good thing, why didn't the school board come out and talk to us about it? Just why trip. is it we had to get a letter from the city? Mr. Trapp, I'm sorry. You're trying I'm to done. keep things, trying to keep things as sure as possible. Thank, Thank you very you. much. There's a, a person by the name of Aaron. I'm assuming that's a, a, a lady online who also wanted to speak against. So Aaron, if you uh, could uh, address yourself for the record, your name and address, please. That would be great. Yes. Can you hear me okay? I think I'm unmuted. Yes. Okay. My name is Erin Stampelmeyer. And my, I live at 4144 Lancelot Road. Um, we are also business owners and property owners on Main Street in Sylvania. And so this cell tower is not only located near our homes, but also our business where we spend all of our time if we're not at home. So... Um, I know the health concerns are not a reason that you can deny this proposal, but I will state that that is certainly a concern of ours. Um, I've emailed and sent plenty of information along, so I'm not going to repeat all of that. But um, two things that still stick out is that the city could be held liable for anything that could happen. Um, I don't understand why we'd want to take responsibility on the city for something that insurance policies don't cover. Um, and I also don't understand how we're going to take this and um, ignore the fact that there's other more efficient, reliable, more secure, and less hazardous options. Um, I, they've already been spoken about some of the hard wiring and that type of thing. So I'm not going to um, berate that. But I also started a pet petition yesterday morning online just to see what kind of response we got there. And in just over 36 hours, we've gotten... Um, 65 signatures now from the community um, showing that they're not wanting this to go through also. So I just hope that city council can take these things into consideration and um, just look at some safer options for our community. So I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Erin. Um, any other members oh. of the audience that wanted to speak against? I have a question. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Hello, my name is Peter Schultz. I live 5820 Cushman Road. Uh, I was wondering if there is a financial benefit to the city or the school that is hinging on this decision. Well, as far I, I can't answer the question for the school district, but as far as I know, there's no financial benefit to the city. Well, let me... Let me clarify, Mrs. Brining, would this be a separate parcel? I'm sorry? Would this be a separate parcel? Um, I don't believe so. So this would not be a property split? I, they they so have it, submitted an application to the planning commission for that. So, they, so this is on tax-exempt property, therefore the city would receive even though in, no inside millage either, correct? Correct. So no, I don't think, I, I think that's a fair statement. We would have no... I, I would... I'm not prepared to concede that point. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> when they when you donate when the, when the school board is using their property for something other than school purposes, 
I think that raises a, a potential issue uh, going forward. Uh, I can tell you we haven't. That's not what we're about here okay. today. Um, just one. Uh, you, you could you can ask the school board. I, I assume the school board is getting some leak thing. But I don't know anything about well, that's, that. That's that's what they you know they talk about a lease. It's kind of what I'm after here. Yeah, but I, I think, Mister, with regard to the city, that is not an issue for us. Okay. Yeah. Would we benefit in any tax that uh, service would derive with that kind of savings? Any tax from the service services from the tower from the? I don't think so, but I would have to double check with Mr. Schroeder. I don't know. Is it is it safe to say that any benefit to the city would be de minimis? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any other? Uh, Comments against? Yes, ma'am. Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Lindsay Samuelson. I live at 5242 Eagle Ridge Lane, and I practice, um, I'm a naturopathic doctor. I practice on Sylvania Sil Sil on Main Street. Um, first, thank you guys very much for considering this issue and asking all the hard, good questions. Um, I'm not a lawyer, and but I do believe, and I'm not sure, but that preemption of local zoning laws only pertains to towers on municipal properties. The school board has invited this on their property, so that might be something to consider. I'm not sure. Um, I'm skipping a lot of stuff because I don't want to repeat what everyone else said. Um, I agree with everybody well, that has opposed all you know, their points. Um, and I do know a growing number of potential homeowners, including myself, are dissuaded from purchasing homes and sending their kids to schools that reside near these towers based on the myriad of evidence that we are not allowed to discuss. Um, I do know the lease for the school board to answer the gentleman's question is about $25,000 a year, which actually is nothing compared to the liability that's at stake in this situation. As a taxpayer, I realize that there's no insurance to cover for large claims in their um, insurance policy. Even the insurance giant Lloyds of London won't touch it. We know what happened in the asbestos and tobacco story, and this is the next chapter. All insurance companies expressly exclude risks from wireless radiation from their coverage policies. Sylvania School Board and Verizon insurance policy is not regulated by the state insurance department. It is a joint self-insurance pool and does not participate in the state guarantee fund. It has no financial capacity to handle significant simultaneous claims. So on the surface, Sylvania's insurance policy looks great, but if there's a major calamity that hits the state, the Ohio school plan will go bust. The Ohio Teachers Union should be concerned about this. Even though the policies appear to cover EMF risks, electromagnetic frequency risks, they could probably only cover a few hits before running into trouble. If scores of neighbors, students, and teachers got sick from EMF from the proposed tower and this new 5G technology that is being rolled out, which doesn't have a lot of science, it doesn't have any science to claim it's safe, the insurance would quickly be dissipated and taxpayers would be left holding the bag. I am appealing to you council members, not on the basis of health concerns, but on liability and the burden on taxpayers if this tower causes harm to our community members. We are setting ourselves up to lose hundreds of, lose hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money if sued for reasonable accommodation and for willful neglect. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Mrs. Browning, the term liability has come up in regards to the city on a number of occasions. If you could come up, and address that question for us, that would be wonderful. <clears throat> so if there is uh, this information that, that, that becomes available, mm -hmm. would the city be on the hook for liability because it created a special use permit or for, or for any other reason associated with RF I have not been aware of a case where they have um, held the city liable for a special use permit that was granted that was later found to be harmful, though I admittedly have not 
did not spend a lot of time researching that specific issue as it relates to the cell tower. I'd be happy to do some further research if the council would like and get back to you on that. I don't think this would fall classically within our immunity. Or That's my in, that is my instinct, but I can't say for certain. <laughs> I have not heard of a case. A, you know, if you just think of just being held liable because a special use permit was granted, I can't. I can't think of a case. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else in the audience that wanted to speak against? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Diane Phillips, 5036 Valencia Drive. My husband Jerome and I are strongly opposed to this. We have lived in the community for 52 years. Our children graduated from Savannah schools with a wonderful education, by the way. So I do agree with all the points that have been made. They've covered most of the things I would have covered. <clears throat> but I want you to know that dozens of communities in the U.S are taking matters into their own hands and establishing ordinances to limit the tower's proximity to schools and residences. <clears throat> this prevents being sued for willful negligence by local residents who struggle with having their tower within um, 1,500 feet of their homes and workplace. 21 countries have exposed have exposure limits far more stringent than the, U, the current FCC, which was obviously stated written a long time ago. I'm also interested in what kind of security the people who service these towers on our school grounds would have. And also, the, if, if the golf course is too far north, how is the library not okay? The golf course is much further north. So those are my points. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else that wants to speak against? Oh, but sorry, I didn't see you over there. My apologies. I'm Nancy Larson. I live at 4015 Newcastle Drive in Sylvania. Um, I also agree. I'm speaking against this um, zoning waiver. I agree with all the points that have been made. I think it's interesting that that 1996 uh, ruling had to exclude health concerns and environmental concerns. That kind of begs the question as to why the uh, cell phone industry thought that they needed to do that preemption and also get themselves out from underneath the immunity. That tells you there are serious health problems with the electromagnetic radiation that is exuded from each cell phone tower. Is it possible to do cell phone towers without emitting radiation? Yes or no? No. Okay. We already have them on Maplewood School. We have them on Southview, and now we want to put them on Northview. This is not acceptable. As a citizen, I do not accept that Verizon or any other corporation gets to irradiate me and all the other citizens in order for us to have faster, quicker 5G service. I understand that there's a need for instantaneous access when we have a shooter in North New High School. That's another issue. But I am sick and tired of communities and legislators solving short-term problems and creating longer-term health problems for us and our planet. It is not acceptable. And you all were elected by us, the school board was elected by us to protect our children. And you talk about safety being the reason that you want this up when you are going to make all of us less safe. If you think you have to follow the 1996 law and exclude health, you also are elected to do what's right. And in my opinion, that is to say no to this and to make the cell phone companies come up with another way to do business that does not cost us, our health. And if buried cables won't do that, then they need to figure out how to do their business without poisoning us and hurting us. Mrs. Larson, your Thank time. You. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go around the first time. Thank I you. just want to ask a question. Okay. When you're ready. Ma'am. <laughs> Sure. 
here in Ball, 5824 Cushman Road, Savannah. I do own a business and property on Main Street. I have grandchildren that go to Maplewood. They will eventually go to Northview. Some of them already have health issues. I just think it's a um, health issue and I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any, Mrs. Browning, is there anyone else online that indicated an interest in speaking? Uh, anybody else from the audience uh, who hasn't spoken yet? Mrs. Zeckman, if you wanted to ask your question, then I'm happy to address it. Uh, Rebecca Zeckman, 5522 Benno Road. About 10 years ago, a number of concerned neighbors in Sleepy Hollow got together with Verizon because there were so many drop calls. And what we were told at that time was that there was so much building going on out, on out. I don't know what direction that is. West? West. West. Good. Okay. <laughs> on out west that they pointed receivers on the towers to accommodate the new residences. And that was why we were losing service in Sleepy Hollow. I'm curious 10 years later if that's true and if there's an alternative solution which would use existing towers for to support people in downtown Sylvania and the area around Northview and newer towers could be built further out. Possibly Highland wants to sponsor one. Ms. Zeckman, I can assure you there's only one person in this room that has the expertise to possibly answer that question. And that would be Mr. Carr, because I don't think anybody up here has that level of knowledge or skill. Once again, Steve Carr, um, the answer to the question is um, any existing structure of height is currently being used to its utmost capability to provide the most robust network that we possibly can, which is not doing the job, which is why this proposed site is before you this evening. Before you go, Mr. Carr, I did have a question for you that Mr. Trapp brought it up. Why not the front of the building? I would have to review that with my RF engineer. Um, I will, you know, it, it's it's a movement of probably say two hundred feet, a little more, maybe maybe two hundred fifty, three hundred feet. But it would get it away from more residential neighborhoods the uh as far as the current distances from property lines to the north is 457 feet that's well over football length and then some from the south 391 from the east 661 from the west 672 feet from property lines this is centrally located in such of the property that it is not close to one specific property line and located within the layout of the existing campuses, existing structures of the light standards, which is another benefit from, I will tell you this, and I've been in this business for 30 years. Six months go by, you don't see those towers anymore. There'd be many times I'd be doing zoning hearings, or even when I talk to property owners, and they say, well, what are, what's one of these things look like? Because I'm the guy that talks to the property owner, gets to lease some. What are one of these things looks like, what look like? I said, how do you, how do you get to work? They give me the path that they go to work. I say, you pass one every day. You know what their response is to me? Oh my gosh, I never even saw it. Just like back in the day when they put up all the telephone books. It becomes part of the landscape. Uh, and proposed site with where it is located on the property and such that it is centrally located does not really throw it to one particular side, one residential area, but fits it within the mix of what is currently on the property. Mr. Carr, what will the lighting be for the aircraft? Um, is it a size that? No, um, it is not required to have any lighting. The way they do it, the lighting with towers, anything over um, 200 feet tall has to be lit. Anything under is only mandated by the FAA. We basically present our location to the FAA, or they'll send a response back to us through their internet based website that says, you don't even have to talk to us about it. Now, if I was closer, different story. 
Thank you, Mr. Carr. Thank you. I don't think I got an answer to my question. I don't think he has. I don't miss it, but I don't think he has an answer. Oh, okay, you don't know the answer. What was the question specifically? The, the question was, is it possible, as we were told by Verizon in a meeting with the neighborhood some years ago, that they could redirect existing receivers on towers to accommodate the needs of our area and build a tower out farther? The answer to that question is no. Thank you. Okay. Let, let me elaborate just a tiny bit on that. So one of the things that you need to take a look at and understand is the way technology has changed in the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So when this whole business started back in the 80s, we were using frequencies that traveled 4 and 5 and 10, 15 miles. So they were high power and they went out very far. Today, uh, if you look at the auction that was just completed here in the past 60 days, we're now using frequencies and have been migrated to frequencies that are higher and higher in frequency. When you get higher and higher in frequency, they go less distance and they penetrate less. So you need to be closer. So where you had the cell site design back in, in the 90s, where we were designing cell sites to be every three to five miles apart, today in a 4G, in a 5G world, these antennas need to be in a dense urban area. It's close to maybe 750 feet. I mean, you look at some place like New York City because of the people that used to live there. Um, we're talking about every single block. So I understand your, your question about couldn't we go a mile or two or three up here and maybe turn this way and solve the problem. The problem doesn't get solved by getting further away. You have to be right on top of it, again, because of the frequencies. And it's not for tonight, but you can look at the science on how far these, these radio waves travel and how well they penetrate. And again, we're talking back to inbuilt coverage and car driving down the road, all those kind of things are the things that today's wireless world is trying to solve. And it's not helped by being further away where it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, Thank it's about 10 years. Sir, please, Bob. Mm -hmm. Chris Blakely, 7027 Hickory Ridge Road. Um, first question. Uh, I, my background is engineering, so my first question is, is, is do nothing an option? The first thing you always ask is, is do nothing an option? Um, second question uh, I guess I have is, is the reason this is going in is for safety? Like basically North US keeps dropping calls and they're worried is if something happens, they can't then get a hold of someone? Is that is that what I'm understanding or no? Sir, the, the thing is before us is a special use permit. I. I, I'm not going to make a comment on what the okay. cer safety circumstances that are or aren't at Northview High School. Okay. I don't think any of us well, can I heard, I heard, I heard answer. someone mention it, so that's why. And, and that may well be the case, but My that's first not question would be, do they have a landline? Because if they have a landline, you know what I mean? You could, you could make the call, you know, whenever you want. Um, my other comment to the gentleman who said you're not going to notice it, you know, with all due respect, that that's asinine. You drop it down 23. Maybe I'm just more observant than others, but that it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Um, that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any other comments against the tower? Anyone else online? Any other questions from members of council? Yeah, Mr. Frack. Um, and again, I'm not sure uh, who who is it directed at. I guess Bugger has the answer. How many other similar towers are in the city of Sylvania? Do we know that? Right. I mean, is it two or is it a dozen? Does anybody know? Uh, Gene Abercrombie Council, the applicant. Uh, we don't have reliable information on the number. Of but there are others. Yes. In the, in the city? Uh, just not in the city. There are no others in the city. Yeah. We have something on top of the water tower. Yes. Right? If it's not in the city, it's uh, on the uh, edge and there where the township line is very close. Uh, I think the uh, uh, Brink Road is one that recently where, where the bar is. Which, which road? Yeah. The Cro Cro uh, Brent. So Brent Road. There's, uh, that may or may not be in the city, depending on what yeah, block you're on. I know, <laughs> what they did, I know what they did is they, when they, they basically placed them on township property. And it was a commercial zoning classification, which would then be, would then be exempt uh, for allowing uh, for allowing the facility to be placed. So, uh, there is one over time. 
major magics. Oh, there's the one down. Uh -huh. okay. Peru, Brent, yeah, Main Street. Main Street. Yeah. And then there's the ones out by Peru. So then, uh, and of course, the ones on the water tower. Right. How many, how many companies are on the water tower? We have three companies coming up the water So we have these similar or the, the same technology in these places for a while, in years, decades. Is that correct? Yes, the, the existing ones that are in the city were here. I've been in the city since Mr. Allen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on down. I yeah. <laughs> um, the existing towers that are in the city are at least in the city in 2011. This will be the first uh, tower that we built in SUP. Um, the one on Peru and Brent that is just in the township. Um, there's one on the Great Road that the mayor addressed, one uh, over by Kroger, Pennsylvania. Uh, there's one that wasn't in the city at the time, but it is now off, the, off Centennial uh, yeah. Road. Um, and then uh, we have three companies that are on our uh, Burger Park. And do we know of any, has there been any issues, liability issues, complaints, lawsuits, anything like that regarding our towers we currently have? Not in my touch yet, no. Okay. Mr. Brining, would you concur with that? Yes. And, 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 the, and the mayor's recollection on these things is longer than most people's. So, yeah. Mayor, do you recall anything? <laughs> no, I don't. But I do, I do know that the city erected a new water tank a few years ago up by Centennial Terrace. And I, Mr. Eller confirmed that that one was designed such that it could have cell antennas on top of it. That's correct. It is farther to the west, um, which, but it may be too far to the north, but it's about the same amount north as the northview site. It can be more than 100 feet or so farther north. I wonder if that site was considered. It is on out on Centennial Road. We are actually, this is Steve Carr again. We are actually co-located on the tower um, on Centennial Road between Erie Street and Little Road. Yes, I can like picture that one as well. That's where we're, that's where we're at. So this one, your new tower, needs to be east of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then okay. we have another one uh, where we're located where West Alec Alexis Road and Rome Road. Yep, and then the other one down there at Brent Road and North Holland Savannah Road, and then you have the one <coughs> which is over in Michigan. Mr. Fry, if I may make a few uh, closing comments. <coughs> Please be brief. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to address a couple of uh, common themes that came up in the opposition. Number one is the issue of, of location on the Northeast site. Um, it is my understanding, though I did not represent Tarpon in connection with the negotiation release, that that site is within the campus where the school board wanted it. Recognize that this is a long-term lease. I believe the initial term is 30 years. So it will be there for an extended period of time. And the school needs to maintain flexibility as far as development of other buildings or whatever the case may be. So I think that that answers that. Um, the second is this issue of liability that's come up a number of times uh, that, that keeps getting bantered around without any legal support or justification to it. I believe Mr. Hainham's comment is, is the relevant one that the concept of sovereign immunity would, would likely uh, kick in. And just because it's not covered under this person's policy or that person's policy, it doesn't automatically mean that the city is liable. Can somebody sue the city? Sure, anybody can sue the city at any time for anything. It doesn't mean they're going to. And, and finally, the, the last um, uh, comment is uh, one of the uh, opponents spoke about the reason for preemption as well, the cell carriers knew that there was a problem, so they, they preempted it. Um, that is not the case. There are many areas of law where there is preemption from local governance. The prime example in Ohio is the townships, being of limited uh, powers, do not have the power to regulate agricultural uses. And again, the reason for that is uniformity across the state. And the reason for this is uniformity across the nation with placement of cell towers. And Congress in 1996 recognized that this was an emergent industry and that it needed to provide flexibility 
and an even playing field across the country so we don't end up with uh, 10,000 different jurisdictions that we're, we're dealing with health issues on that that is addressed at the federal level. Uh, unless there are any further questions, uh, I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, council determines what what the next steps may or may not be. Mr. Farr. Yes, sir. You know, we haven't heard from the school board on this. We've got members of the school board here. I'd like to know what their thinking was. I think that would have been- Ms. Hoffman, Mr. Feller. That yeah. would affect my- Mr. Feller, please. Yeah. Uh, Greg Feller, uh, 442 Lincoln request. School board member. Um, I guess, do you have a specific question or- Well, you've- um, I, I, I assume you gave public notice of this, but, uh, but you didn't have this sort of uh, response. No, not when we were discussing. Obviously, it came before our board at a public meeting, but no, we did not have. And, I, and obviously, you don't give notice to right. the, the, the effective date. Right. So what was, what was the school board's process? Uh, if we can't consider uh, the health effects. You certainly could have. So, what was your what was the school board thinking on that? Um, so, I, I want to preface this by saying this was this was going on before I was on the board. So, I'm kind of late in the process. And when did, when was the approval? Uh, we approved it. I want to say it was. I know it was signed in January. When you know, I heard December, January, somewhere around there. When we approved it, so I was on the board when we approved. It. I guess. I'm yeah. just saying the discussion happened. You know, started before I was there. Um, I, I can speak for myself. You know, I did some research, obviously, on this and tried to look into the health issues and. And, you know, there was, there was a lot of information on both sides. Um, ultimately, for me, when we came to the decision, I felt comfortable that we were not um, putting our, our students at risk. Um, you know, I've lived, there's a cell tower by, someone mentioned by Kroger and Sylvania. I lived by that for 13 years. My neighbors lived there for a lot longer. I don't have any issues. I don't know if any of my neighbors had issues. So I know for me, and I believe for the other board members, when we voted, you know, we all did our research, kind of looked into some things, and we were all comfortable. So we did approve the lease. Um, so the school is getting paid on a yearly basis. I don't know the numbers, to be honest with you. I have to look it up, so I don't want to guess what the number is right now. But is that a good question? Is it substantial? It's 12000 a year. 12000 Okay. I thought it was fifteen, seventeen ish but somewhere ten to 20000 a year. I know it goes up every year. There's a percentage that it goes up every year. I don't know what that is on top of it. No, that, yeah, I've heard a lot of numbers today, and um, the reality is this lease was negotiated back in, we had it finalized in 2018, November 2018, and um, it just didn't get signed, it didn't get signed, it didn't get signed. And then we drug into 2019, COVID hit, everything shut down. We've been trying, as Steve said, for, for many, many years, and it actually started in 2010. That's correct. The, the search for a site here. Um, when the new school board came in, they took a look at the lease, and the only stipulation that they had was they wanted an increase in rent. It got to a point where the tower was unable to be built for financial reasons because of the height. I'm sorry, because of the increase in rent the school wanted, and we were able to negotiate something that could be lived with from a financial perspective and from a school perspective. And I'm sorry, I don't have the lease. I didn't look at it tonight before I got here, but I want to say we're at like. 16 that's a month, no, that's something okay. like that. That's so it's not 25,000, it's not 12,000. I believe it's around 1,600. So, at, at what price was the rent? And that's an annual number we're talking about. Right? No, I'm talking about a month. A month. Sixteen hundred a month. Six, yeah, so sixteen. Oh, that's right. Was, yeah. Sixteen hundred dollars per month. Sixteen hundred dollars per month. Yes, sir. Okay. And I believe it was originally a thousand dollars a month that had been negotiated in 2018. That's where you're getting the number from. Yeah. That again, that was all agreed to, but that word went out and it came in. It's nineteen thousand two hundred. And just to touch on that, so we on the board we had a study done. And um, we hired a consultant to do a study for us to evaluate rents on cell towers at different locations, whatever. And so we want to make sure we were getting a fair deal. So that's where that number came from. Okay. And you said that some, so where was the number where it was economically uh, feasible to go forward? I believe we were right around it 
I don't have this number in my poem here, but I believe we're right around two thousand dollars. That was not economical for us to build a cell phone. Building a cell phone is very capital intensive. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. Nancy, there's your problem. Mr. Hamm, any other questions for Mr. Cohen? No. Any other questions from any other members of council for the Tarpon Towers people or school board? What's the will of council at this point? We, it seems to me we have Okay, well, I, I, the ability to refer this to a committee. Yeah, I, I think we want to refer to committee. Uh, we got some substantial written comments. Um, one in particular um, attachment to one of the emails about um, title positions for safe technology that I think we want to talk about. And so, uh, going forward as we uh, fine tune the special conditions. You know, the special conditions I think were that we covered that were approved by the planning commission. Uh, one of the things that I that I know now that I didn't know then is I would want them to certify not just that they were uh, that the towers would be constructed and maintained in accordance with national standards, but operated as well. Operation is the key to the health exemption, uh, to the, uh, I mean, they have to operate within the FCC guidelines uh, for the radiation in order for us to be barred from considering that as a factor. So I would definitely want to, going, going forward, I think I would want to include those in the uh, conditions as part of our special permit. I think the appropriate place to talk about that probably I think it makes sense to go to, to zoning if that's the will of council. Other thoughts from members of council regarding the referral to zoning committee? I move that we refer it to the zoning committee. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, I'm not sure who was first. Did she Did she Any Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor of... Uh, uh, of moving the special use permit uh, 1-2021 to the Zoning Committee for further uh, evaluation, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the uh, the uh, public Second. hearing? Second. Any further discussion? Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. We are adjourned at 7, 12 p.m. Thank you very much for everybody online. Thank you for all of your participation, uh, the people from Park Tarpa Towers and all the uh, people. You're welcome to stay for the council meeting. If you would like to uh, see the, nec the, the, uh, the next thing, that starts in about 15 minutes. <laughs>